Hey guys, welcome back. Houston Math Prep here. In this video, we're going to take a look at finding values on a normal distribution using technology. So if we know the area underneath a particular normal curve, then we can use one of our distributions in our calculator to find the z-score or the value that corresponds to that area. So just like we did when we were finding probabilities on a normal distribution, we're going to go into the distribution menu and this time, since we are given the probability trying to work backwards to find the value, we're going to use the distribution inverse normal. So that's going to be option three on a TI calculator. When you open up that menu, it's going to ask you for three items. It's going to ask you for the area, and we want to note that that is area to the left. Okay, so no matter what area you're trying to find, you have to feed the calculator the area to the left. Then it's going to ask you for the mean of your distribution and the standard deviation. Once you've filled those in, you can go hit paste. It will bring up uh, this inverse norm and then it will have those three values in there. You can go ahead and hit enter and it will give you your value. If you have an older operating system, then this particular menu won't come up. It will just bring up inverse norm with an open parenthesis onto your screen. And so you'll just type in your area to the left, your mean, your standard deviation, all separated by commas. So let's take a look at how that would work. So let's say we have scores on an aptitude test that are normally distributed. We have a mean of 18, and a standard deviation of six. Let's answer some questions. So what score would a student need to be in the lowest 30% of scores? So with these questions, I highly encourage you to draw yourself a little normal distribution picture and sketch what's going on. So if I want the lowest 30%, keeping in mind that my mean will always be at 50%, 30% would likely be about here. So I'm definitely expecting a value that is below the mean, below 18. So if this is 30% or 0.3, then I'm going to use inverse norm, my area to the left of the value that I'm interested in is 0.3, my mean of my distribution is 18, and my standard deviation for my distribution is 6. So either using the menu or typing it in just like that, we get a value of 14.85. So a student scoring a 14.85 or below would be in the lowest 30% of scores on this aptitude test. Okay, answering another, what score would a student need to be in the top 10%? So again, starting by drawing ourselves a picture of our normal distribution. Here's that median and mean that would give us a 50%. So top 10% is probably somewhere up here. So if I am working with top 10%, that right there is area to the right of the particular value we're interested in. But when we use inverse norm, we have to feed it area to the left. So if there is 0.1 to the right, then 1 minus 0.1 or 0.9 will be our area to the left. So going in and grabbing our distribution inverse norm, again, we're going to feed it the area to the left, which would be 0.9, our mean of 18, and our standard deviation of 6. Typing that in and hitting enter, we get a score of 25.69. So to be in the top 10% of scores on this test, a student would need to score a 25.69 or above. Given that same aptitude test with its distribution, let's answer a couple other questions. What score would a student need to be in the 10th percentile? So remember that percentile tells you 
what percent did worse? Than you, okay? So 10th percentile, if we were to draw a picture and shade that, if I'm in the 10th percentile, that means 10% did worse than me. So 10th percentile would mean that the area to the left is 0.1. So to find this value, we would use our inverse normal distribution. Remember, you've always got to feed it area to the left. In this case, 0.1, your mean of 18, your standard deviation of 6. Typing that in, we get a score of 10.31. So a student would need to score a 10.31 to be in the 10th percentile. All right, what score would a student need to be in the third quartile? So remember that quartiles divide our data into four equal pieces. And 25% of the data is in each piece. So the third quartile is this value here where we have 75 percent to the left so if we were to shade that in our median our mean those are known as uh, in this case our q2 so q3 would probably be about right here and q3 would have an area to the left of 0.75 so inverse norm of 0.75, a mean of 18, a standard deviation of 6. So to be in the third quartile, we would need a score of 22.05. All right, guys, that does it for this video on finding values on a normal distribution using technology. Catch us in the next one.